abandoned chateaux have long been objects of public fascination, captivating our imagination like living, breathing characters out of a gothic novel. These architectural wonders left to ruin are silent witnesses to the opulence and tragedies of ages past. To step into one is to step into a world frozen in time, a place where the air is thick with untold stories and whispered secrets. But there's one chateau in particular that has emerged from the shadows, not just as a relic, but as a beacon for the modern age. And indeed, it's an extraordinary narrative that defies convention. Imagine a chateau, abandoned and reclaimed by nature, now given a new lease on life, not by a single wealthy benefactor, but by a social media savvy legion of dreamers. And these aren't your usual robber baron philanthropists. They are ordinary people armed with the power of the internet and a shared vision. In a world where individualism often overshadows community, this is a triumph of collective action over solitary ambition, a victory of the many over the few. So where is this wonder, this fusion of past and present, this living proof that unity can breathe new life into ancient stones? On today's episode of Old Money Mansions, you'll find it elegantly poised amidst the rolling green fields of France as we introduce Chateau de la Mothe Chandenier, the abandoned French chateau the internet bought. First off, take a moment to picture this, a medieval world of serfs, nobles and gallant knights living under the command of the soil beneath their boots. Our backdrop is the 13th century and the Bouquet family, the ruling lords of France's Loudon, commence construction on a fortress designed to be an enduring stronghold, the Chateau de la Motte Chandonnier. In those initial years, the chateau was not so much an opulent abode as it was a vigilant guardian, poised strategically on a hill with a panoramic view over the meeting point of the Vienne and Toué rivers. The edifice was uncompromisingly robust, with towering walls, jagged parapets, a surrounding moat, and an exclusive drawbridge as the sole gateway in moments of peril. Yet, within this daunting enclosure, the essence of life flourished. The Bouquets called this fortress home, sharing it with the very populace it was erected to shield. Zoom to the 17th century, and we witness an atmospheric transformation wafting through the stone corridors. The Renaissance comes calling, a resplendent era of art and cerebral awakening, and it leaves an irrevocable mark. Keen to evolve, the bouquets unveil new structural wonders. Two main pavilions materialize, resplendent in Renaissance flair, lavished with intricate carvings and statuary. Ample windows serve as sunlit gateways, as beams of light pirouette across the stony ground. The chateau's precinct becomes consecrated ground as a chapel ascends, and adjacent to it, a formal French garden erupts into life. But the latter is not your run-of-the-mill flowerbed, it's a masterpiece of design, a symmetrical wonder where each floral entity earns its rank, akin to courtiers in a royal assembly. By the 18th century, though, we witness not just an exchange of proprietors, but a significant atmospheric metamorphosis. The year is 1757, and the Lejeune family swans in, their purses fat and their palettes sophisticated. The chateau undergoes a radical renovation. It morphs into a visual banquet of grandeur and aesthetic extravagance. Fresh architectural extensions emerge. A majestic staircase spirals skywards and a grand ballroom appears, ready to host the social spectaculars of the French elite. And what of society? Under the Lejeune patronage, the chateau becomes a magnetic hub, luring the most refined of the French nobility. Evenings sparkle with opulent galas and soirees, the sounds of gaiety and clinking flutes, an auditory relic that spans epochs. Yet, make no mistake, this isn't solely a haven for shallow amusement. The library burgeons to over 10,000 volumes, and the realm transforms into an intersection of scholarly dialogue and artistic vision. La Motte Chandonnier, in its various incarnations, thus becomes a magnetic locus of culture and thought. And with that, we enter the 19th century, a legendarily volatile period in the annals of France. Revolutions stormed across the terrain, demolishing old norms and leaving the aristocracy starkly exposed. And Le Chateau de la Mode Chandigné was no exception to this cataclysmic whirlwind. Plucked from the Lejeune family's grasp, it was relegated to become a governmental asset, its magnificent ballrooms converted into military lodgings, and its once lively passageways metamorphosed into dour prison corridors. And the subsequent deterioration 
was nothing short of devastating. The impeccably manicured gardens, once the epitome of floral artistry, succumbed to an untamed jungle of neglect. The chateau itself was reduced to a spectre, its invaluable treasures pilfered and its very essence tarnished. It seemed as though time had decided to overlook this once teeming hub of nobility and intellect. From here we meet Francois Hennecart, an affluent businessman who saw potential amid the ruins. In 1809 he seized ownership, stoking the embers of a bygone era with intent to restore. Yet even affluence has its limits. Hennecart found himself tethered by fiscal constraints, with ambitions too hefty for a dwindling coffer. A twist of lineage provided a glimmer of hope in 1857, when Baron Joseph Lejeune, his lineage reverberating with the chateau's inaugural owners, took charge. Restoration initiatives were resurrected. Craftsmen descended in droves, each committed to mending the seams of time and history. However, the chateau's lot was marred by a grim quirk of fate. A catastrophic fire in 1870 raised it to near oblivion. The Baron commenced immediate renovations, but departed this world shortly thereafter, leaving the chateau a perpetual work in progress. The subsequent financial tailspin consumed the Lejeune lineage. Prosperity vanished like a mirage, and restoration ambitions were archived alongside dated blueprints and sketches. As the 19th century ebbed away, the Chateau de la Mothe Chandenier became a haunting figure, a building bereft of its crown, its rooms hollow like vacant sockets, its artistic gardens now a thicket of neglect. Indeed, the once dignified moat had capitulated to the punishing hands of time. Thus, at the time, the Chateau stood as a melancholic symbol of decay, its story an intricate narrative etched in wood and stone. However, cocooned within its deteriorating structure remained an untold tale, one of opulence, ruin, and mankind's ceaseless yearning for rejuvenation. The ensuing 20th century for the Chateau de la Mode Chandonnier was a theater of transformation and strife. Baron Edgard Lejeune's extravagant existence had sapped the estate's vitality, and World War I was the proverbial salt in the wound. The chateau, repurposed as an impromptu wartime hospital, seemed to sag under the hefty baggage of its storied past. The post-war era returned the property to its beleaguered owners and affixed another layer of financial strain. Damaged roofs and shuttered windows were now the mise-en-scene, while untamed gardens resembled an unruly crowd in nature's theatre. By the 1930s, what was once a radiant chateau had deteriorated into a derelict monument. Nevertheless, the crumbling estate continued to captivate the local imagination. Whispers of the spectral white lady who roamed its forlorn hallways tingled spines. Folk tales of hidden treasure, untouched by revolutionary fury, further fueled the mystique. The property became a magnetic draw for those in pursuit of the supernatural or the simply valuable. When 1981 rolled around, a private owner, entranced by the chateau's dilapidated grandeur, made a valiant bid to refurbish it. But this was no walk in the park. It was more like an expedition up Everest. Floors rotten to the core, walls on the brink of collapse, and a roof that had given up the ghost were but the initial hurdles. Yet, the unyielding proprietor enlisted a team of virtuoso craftsmen who revered each room and detail as if it were holy scripture. Over 400 rooms and expansive grounds required fastidious attention. Soon, news of the rehabilitation venture spread with the virulence of an engaging rumor. History buffs, lensmen and even media outlets converged on the site. Entranced by its singular synthesis of architectural allure and tumultuous past, Articles were penned, cameras clicked incessantly, and once again the halls reverberated, now with the footfall of a smitten public. Even the world of cinema found the ambience irresistible, electing the chateau as a cinematic locale. Such effusive focus was more than mere accolade for the owner. It was a vital lifeline. With the burgeoning public fascination, a steady flow of funding emerged, facilitating ongoing restoration. It was as though the chateau was gradually rousing from a long slumber, stretching its wings for a long overdue flight out of decades of historical oblivion. Thus the dawn of the 21st century ushered in a period ripe with potential for the Chateau de la Mothe Chandonnier. Though entrancing, its time-worn elegance couldn't entice a buyer willing to brave its dilapidated state. It appeared as though the estate was fated to further disintegrate. But of all things, the internet intervened, a ubiquitous nexus binding people across the globe. You see, the castle had begun to grace social media feeds, 
capturing imaginations far removed from the French countryside. Scene cuts to the year 2017, and a cadre of enterprising French individuals who presented a radical proposition, why not allow the castle's legion of admirers to possess a fragment of its splendor? A crowdfunding initiative took flight, and the response was overwhelming. 1.6 million euros were amassed from aficionados spanning 84 nations. In a world marred by division, here stood a castle unifying a global constituency. With ownership solidified in 2018, the collective of stakeholders convened to plot the course forward. This was a collaborative endeavor. Democratically steered, they solicited public sentiment through forums and digital polls, ultimately resolving to refurbish the exterior and welcome intrigued onlookers. Further, the estate's cinematic magnetism would be monetized, its scenery serving as the backdrop for film ventures, merging its historical richness with contemporary function. Rolling forward, between 2019 and 2021, restorative efforts were painstakingly executed. The roof was resuscitated, the walls were bolstered, and the gardens, they've shed their spookiness. Still, the interior remains a medley of grandeur and deterioration, a financial enigma yet to be fully unraveled. However, despite these accomplishments, the reawakening of the Chateau de la Mode de Chandonnier remains an ongoing saga. Looming obstacles include the ceaseless quandary of financial viability. Balancing heartfelt devotion with fiscal pragmatism is the tightrope to walk. Perhaps the key resides in a judicious business approach, one that honors the estate's heritage while adapting to modern exigencies. Thus, we find ourselves at an intriguing juncture. The castle, once an exclusive dominion of aristocrats and later a murmured myth, has metamorphosed into a collective gem. It stands as an emblem of what can be achieved when societal partitions are dismantled in pursuit of a unifying mission. But as the 2020s have unfurled as a decade of technological miracles, fluctuating socio-political currents, and a relentless focus on the Chateau de la Motte Chandonnier, who knows what the future holds. But admirably, whether gracing the print pages of the New York Times or flickering on the BBC News website, the chateau adamantly refuses to fade into obscurity. The tale of this castle is too magnetic to be sequestered within French borders alone. Across the globe, people have donned their work gloves, some virtually, others arriving in France with implements in tow. They bring to the table not just financial contributions, but also hands-on expertise in fields like carpentry and masonry. The chateau thus becomes a focal point of international goodwill and look beyond mere bricks and folklore. A castle can indeed stir people to action, just as the UK's Brodick Castle or New York's Bannerman Castle have shown. Amidst global discord, there's a coming together to conserve echoes from the past. And here's the even more intriguing part. Governance at the Chateau de la Mode Chandonnier isn't unilateral. It's a democratic process. Virtual voting ensures that each co-owner gets a say, whether it's about financial priorities or maintenance tasks. However, democracy is not without its hitches. Navigating toward a collective decision often entangles co-owners in a web of conversations that may delay action. Yet, they've managed to steer adroitly thus far. In comes technology an unobtrusive but formidable partner. Through virtual tours, the Chateau has extended an invitation to the global audience. Enabled by 360-degree viewing experiences, it transcends its physical form to become a universal classroom, a digital meeting point. Social media amplifies these interactions, melding co-owners and observers into thriving online communities. Given its current momentum, the Chateau de la Motte Chandonnier is on the cusp of transitioning from dream to reality. As restorations wind up, it will transform into a venue not only for tourists, but also for diverse activities, such as educational programs and events. It promises to be more than a static monument, actively enriching both local culture and global conversations on heritage preservation. Furthermore, the Chateau holds untapped economic promise. Visualize the surge in local employment opportunities and ancillary businesses that could sprout around it, morphing a decaying relic into a vibrant community hub. Therefore, Le Chateau de la Motte de Chandonnier serves as a prototype, showcasing the incredible things that can happen when a community decides that something is worth rescuing. Additionally, it reiterates that even in our transient digital world, some stories are worth immortalizing. And now, we'd like to see you in the comments. Had you heard of Chateau de la Mode Chandonnier before this video? 
And do you think more chateaux should be saved through crowdfunding? We're looking forward to your responses below. And as always, thanks for your continued viewership here at Old Money Mansions. Cheers until next time.